What's going on everybody? Welcome to episode 4 of your Chia blockchain tutorial series. This episode we're going to talk about the Chia CLI and some common misunderstandings or common pitfalls to avoid to have a better overall experience. So let's start with those. We're going to first take a look at the plot NFT which initially can be a confusing thing to kind of wrap your mind around. So an NFT is a token, it's a thing that you create on the blockchain and, and you own it. So this is unique to you and you control it. It basically controls your plots and your connection to a pool. You can switch to another pool at any time and those plots will move over to that other pool. You only need one plot NFT as we talked about in the previous episode. However, if you wanted to split up your plots across multiple pools, you could use multiple plot NFTs. The only thing to know is that when you create a plot to that plot NFT, it's permanently tied to that plot NFT. Meaning you cannot take plots from one plot NFT and move them to another plot NFT. Now, just because you have a plot NFT does not mean you have to join a pool. You can do what's known as self-pooling. In this situation, you're only ever going to get Chia if you find a block. But it's still recommended to do this through a plot NFT instead of creating plots without a plot NFT, which was the old school way of doing things when Chia first came out before the pooling protocol. So when you're given the option to use a plot NFT, you definitely want to do that, even if you don't plan on joining a pool right away. You always can join a pool later if you decide and move around from pool to pool if you wish. Now, the next area of confusion is the way rewards are distributed. So the reward for a block is split into two. So you have the farming reward and the pool reward. So the farming reward is one eighth of the entire block reward and that is given to the farmer directly. So if you find a block, you will get one eighth of that block reward. If that block reward is two, which it currently is, you will get 0.25 Chia sent directly to your wallet. The other seven eighths is given to the pool. And this is done for all members of that pool. And that's where the pool gets the funds to distribute them consistently across everybody who's contributing to that pool. And this distribution will be done based on your estimated size, in other words, your contribution to the pool. So the more plots you have in that plot NFT, the higher your consistent payouts are going to be. Or the more frequent payouts you're going to get, just depends on how you have your pool settings set up. But the thing you need to understand is that assuming everything is working correctly, it shouldn't matter whether you are in a pool or not a pool, over time your rewards will be about the same. It's just that when you are self-pooling, you will get less frequent, larger rewards, and when you're pooling, you'll get more frequent, smaller rewards, with the difference of any fees that that pool might charge. So let's take a look in the client to see how we can adjust these payout settings. The first from the farming tab, you can go to here and manage farming rewards, and you will see a few things here, the farming reward address and the pool reward address. Now, an important thing to note, you don't need to worry about the pooling payout address here. We're gonna talk about that when we get to the plot NFT. For now, this farmer reward address is very important. This is where one eighth of the block reward is sent when you find a block. So you want to make sure this is an address you own and control. If it's not, you'll likely get a warning that says something like no private keys for one or both addresses. Safe only if you are sending rewards to another wallet. Well, we wanna make sure we get those rewards, so this address is something I own and it looks good. Now again, don't worry about the pool reward address unless you're using old format plots before the pooling protocol. So the other settings, you can go to pooling and some settings can be adjusted here, but you may have it set up so that you need to edit these settings from the pool. So view pool login link. And this will give you a one-time login link to log into your pool's website if that pool supports it. Now this is private, it's not something you will want to give out because this allows you to log into your account. So pools can adjust settings there. Now as I did mention in an earlier video, the farmer is the one to actually confirm the block. So 51% attacks are less likely in the Chia network with the exception of unofficial clients or you know very large farmers 
they could still contribute to an attack like this. That is why it's recommended to use the OP or official protocol pools, which you can find lists of all of those online. Now to become more comfortable with Chia, you might want to familiarize yourself with the CLI, command line interface. This is how you interact with Chia through the terminal. A lot of tools such as the Mad Max plotter are built into the CLI as well, and we're going to take a look at how you can use that. Now the exact instructions to use the CLI depends on your operating system. So here's instructions for Windows, here are instructions for Mac, and from Linux you should be able to use Chia right away just using the Chia command and that seems to work fine. So if you're on Windows follow these instructions, I'm on Mac so I'm going to go with these. So what we will do is we will open the terminal application and open that there. Once you have the terminal open you can use this path here to execute commands through the terminal. So we'll just paste that here. And you can see we get a response, so that looks good. Now, if we want to add this to our path to make it a little bit easier, we will copy this line and paste that here. And now we should be able to say chia-h, and we get a response, so it looks good. So there's a lot of different things you can do in the terminal. You can see some of the different commands here. I'll show you a few examples. The first one being chia plot nft show. This is how you can get information about all of your different plot NFTs, and it'll give you the option to choose a wallet, so I will just select one. And I have a bunch of different plot NFTs, so it'll give me the information for each. Now, when you create a plot, you're going to create it to the pool contract address. So that is how a plot gets associated to the plot NFT. And it says use only for plotting. And each plot NFT also has a launcher ID, which is used to identify it. So you can copy this value and we can say Chia plot NFT get login link dash L and then paste that launcher ID. And this will give you the same kind of link that we saw from the GUI. So that's how you can do it from the terminal. Another useful command is Chia Farm Summary. This will give you just a quick overview of the farm. And there's a ton of commands, so we're not gonna go through all of them. I just wanted to show you a quick few just so you can get some quick experience. Now what I wanna do is talk about CLI plotting. So you can say Chia Plotters and this will give you some information. So we have Chia, Proof of Space, Mad Max, Blade Bit. So if we want to get more information about Mad Max, we can just say Chia Plotters Mad Max H for help. And this will give you all the information needed to create a plot. Now, not all of these are required, many default to values. So what we will do is we'll just go through a quick example of creating a plot through the terminal, which has been my preferred way of doing it, but everybody has their own preference. You can see the same information from that documentation page. So we're gonna need the size, so K32. We can just create one, so that would be for dash N. The threads depends on your processor. And we will also set a temp directory and a final directory. Then the important thing here is you need the farmer key and the contract. So that's what I showed you a little bit earlier. So let's go ahead and try to build out one of these commands. It's okay if you don't get it perfect the first time, but we'll try our best. So the very first thing is we'll say Chia Keys Show. That's where you can get the farmer public key. Just be certain that you are using the right wallet. So each wallet here is defined by a fingerprint. So we'll grab this farmer public key. We will paste that here. And now let's go get our contract. So Chia Plot NFT Show, same wallet. Find the plot NFT that you want to plot to and grab its pool contract address. So we will copy that and I will paste that here as well just in case we need to refer back to that. Now we will clear and start building the plot command. Chia, plotters, Mad Max. And then for the size, we're gonna say K32. We'll create one plot. R is the threads. I'm gonna go with seven threads. Dash T is the temp directory. I'm just going to go with temp, which actually makes me wonder if that directory is created. So I'm just gonna say mkdir temp. And now let's go back to where we were. So temp and then dash D for the destination. You can use a dot for the current directory or you can create another directory. The next up we have the farmer key. So that's where this value comes in. So we'll take this value here paste that. Next up, the contract address. Copy that and paste it here. That should be everything, so we'll hit enter. And it started creating a plot. 
looks good, it'll just go through that process, take some time. Now, a very important thing to know is that plotting uses a lot of disk writes. So I wouldn't create a ton of plots on your main PC. Creating a few is probably not gonna be a problem, but you know, if you're gonna be creating hundreds or thousands, you might want to use a dedicated SSD for it or just an HDD, which does not have the same endurance issues that typical SSDs may have. Or you can look into enterprise SSDs, which have much longer endurance. And as this goes, it will give continual progress updates so you know that it is working. So those are just a few examples of how to use the CLI. Next episode, we're going to take an additional look at how to make sure our farm is working properly. I'll also be talking about ways you can get support if needed, so stay tuned. I'll see you in the next episode.